Hi, welcome to BA Brew. I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And I'm Mike. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the well, the, I suppose the effects of being an institutionalised BA um, and how, how it can be quite a difficult thing when you've been at an organisation for quite a long time. Um, Chris, this, this was your topic at the BA conference in September, wasn't it? Um, great yeah, that's talk. Right. How, how did you, how did you, why, why did it, why did you get the idea for that? You know, what was your inspiration for the talk? Um, I think I'd, I've had two periods during my career where I've worked for um, organisations for a really long time. So in one case, working for a company for 13 years and in the, another case, working at a university for nine years. And what I found was that um, you kind of start to lose sight a little bit of your transferable value and um, that kind of self-doubt and uh, erosion of confidence can kind of creep in. And, and I thought this was something that perhaps was um, just limited to me. But when I then had a number of other conversations with other BAs who'd also had long stints working for um, previous organisations, they all said pretty much exactly the same thing. So I thought, ah, maybe there's a conference presentation in this because I hadn't heard anybody talk about this previously. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? I think we're in a time now where a couple of generations ago, uh, people had a job for life, you know, and actually things are very different now, aren't they? People do tend to move around and quite quite a bit more. Um, yeah. So, so you say you spoke to other people about this then. So, were they kind of feeling the same kind of things? What what kind of things were coming up? Yeah, there was quite a lot of common common trends that came out from people. Really, I mean, obviously, people um, are aware of things like imposter syndrome, but it's a little bit beyond that. Um, quite a lot of people talked about self-doubt or, or difficulties in envisaging how they could work elsewhere. Um, and I think in many cases, a lot of the people I've spoken to feel, felt that it was difficult to gauge whether they were good at their job because they were a good BA or whether it was because of what they knew, um, particularly within an organisation, if they'd worked there for a long period of time, then that kind of subject matter knowledge um, can be quite at the forefront of a lot of the stuff that BAs do. Um, and, and so people had lost sight of their transferable value and therefore were quite scared potentially to, to make a move. I mean, in some cases, people had been happy within their organisation. And certainly I was happy for certain periods of time within the organisations that I worked for. Um, but when it does come time where you want to move on, um, having that fear of moving on really um, because of that, la that loss of sight of transferable value and um, there seem to be a bit of a common problem for, for long-standing BAs. Yeah, no, it makes sense, doesn't it? I think as well, and if you've been somewhere for a long time, there's a comfort thing in there, isn't there as well? And maybe, you know, if, if the benefits are good, so it ends up being a bit of a honey trap as well. And how, how about you, Mike? Have you ever had an experience of this? Of feeling this yeah, I mean, it does kind of ring true, uh, a lot of that. That's that idea, that the comfort, because you know who you need to go and talk to, um, building up that subject matter expertise as well. Um, that yeah that I, th I think i've experienced that in in uh, some jobs that i've been in where i think um feel a bit nervous about looking at going somewhere else and how how things will be different because i'm going to leave all those things behind and as you say you you kind of do lose sight of the fact that you started that job at some point and you didn't have all of those all of that background knowledge and you know all those contacts and you used um, your analysis skills and uh, organizing skills to to build that up um but I think if you have been somewhere for a long period of time, then you can kind of forget that that goes, that's sort of a dim and distant memory. So I, I definitely had that in in a couple of roles where I, I was nervous about moving on. I was in the civil service for 12 years, um, different parts of the civil service. And that, like leaving the civil service was a, a little bit of a shock after like 12 years. It's sort of um, getting that courage um, to, to go elsewhere and then think, well, actually, when I, I, I then worked with British Airways for a while and found that um, a lot of the things that I'd taken for granted and I'd kind of forgotten about um, were all really useful and, and they were they were at my beck and call um, when I started in the new job. I knew what I, I needed to do because I was kind of doing them, probably doing them unconscious, not unconsciously, subconsciously. Maybe I was doing some of them unconsciously. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's interesting because there there's probably a lot of stuff that is going on that you take for granted. So it's that uh, your own tacit knowledge um, mm. that is still sort of applicable. 
Yeah. You're, no, you're probably more aware of those things when you first start out in a role because you yeah. are having to think about it consciously. Whereas, you know, as you become more experienced, there's a lot of things that we tend to do unconsciously, tend to do on autopilot effectively. So you're not really applying mm. much mental attention to what it is you're actually doing. Yeah, it's true. But like you get a new job, or especially if you go to a new organization and start obviously a brand new role. There's things like learning the new systems, you know, where do you go for what, who would you go to, yeah. you know, getting signposted to different things. I mean, it takes six months to get up to speed on that kind of thing, doesn't it? You know, just the sort of mechanics of the job, um, not necessarily even getting into the subject or the project um, sort of topics. But there is a lot to think about. It's, uh, yeah, it, it can be a bit scary. I mean, I think, so I've worked somewhere for about 10 years and when I was ready to move on, I remember thinking, I'm feeling really quite excited about moving on and the change and all the great stuff that, you know, meeting new people, all the good things that, that a new role, a new organisation brings. But also the, there was an element of, well, people think I'm a good BA here. Well, will people think that when I move on? Will, will they like my ways of work and the way I approach things, um, the techniques I use? So there was a bit a bit of, yeah, there was a bit of fear around that. Um, but I think you've got to set the leap of faith sometimes, haven't you? You have, and I think there is that kind of doubt of, well, do I know how to be a BA elsewhere, that perhaps some other professions don't have that element of self-doubt? Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's because we overthink everything, don't we? Be an analyst. It's just what we do. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But I think, I, I mean, one of the other things that I talked about in the presentation is I do think there's also some specific reasons why, for business analysis, this is a particular problem. Um, so. One of those is in relation to the balance of different skills and knowledge that we use in the role. So if you think back to the, um, if you, if you think back to what's in the BCS business analysis book, where it talks about, um, business analysis using personal qualities, um, like team working and communication skills and professional techniques like, um, process modeling and requirements engineering, and then, uh, that kind of, uh, business knowledge in the middle, the, um, subject matter knowledge and domain expertise. Uh, it's really important for BAs to keep those in balance. And I think the longer you have been somewhere, the more that subject matter expertise and domain expertise piece grows. Even if you don't take any effort to learn and develop, that mm. piece will naturally get larger and larger. And that can then tend to crowd out some of the other stuff. Um, and I've certainly seen in the past where BAs have shortcutted their analysis by applying their own subject matter expertise in order to plug the gaps. And I think if you mm. don't keep that laser-like focus on your analytical tools and techniques and how you were using those, if you're not a little bit careful, a little bit more conscious about where you're using your subject matter knowledge, then you can fall into this trap of thinking that your value comes from what you know, rather than from what, mm. um, how you analyze and what you do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point, isn't it? So how, so you moved on recently, Chris, to, to a new institution. How, how have you found mm -hmm. that? You've you sort of lived out um, your, your fears, I suppose. How, how, has it worked <laughs> out okay? What, have you got any, you know, sort of uh, reflections on that? I've found the transition to be absolutely fine. Um, I think that, again, the danger is that BA roles can look different in different places. Um, but actually, I think if you keep on clinging back to that sort of core set of analytical techniques and skills, then actually there is a lot of transferability. Um, I didn't find it as difficult moving this time actually, um, as the first time that I encountered this. So the first organization that I left where I'd been there for 13 years, that I felt very, very, very institutionalized and really struggled to make the leap. Um, and I kind of thought I wouldn't know how to do it elsewhere. I would um, really struggle to make the transition. I thought that other places must do it better than, than we did. Um, but actually, as soon as I then got into my next role, which in that case was a contracting role, um, all of those myths were dispelled, um, immediately found that actually business analysis is business analysis, regardless of where you do it and you, you can transfer those skills. Um, so. It's psychologically, I guess, a set of fears, but the reality um, ends up being quite different. I feel when you move, um, can't guarantee that'll be the case for everybody, but certainly that's been the case mm. for me and for the people that I spoke to for this conference presentation. Mm. So, so you went from a permanent role to, to contracting then as a BA? 
Um, back when I uh, first left, uh, um, when was this? It was about 2008, yes, um, I yeah. did that. Um, I actually took a redundancy, so that made it, that kind of gave me the, the nudge to move. Um, I took a voluntary redundancy package and took the leap. There you go, there you go. How about you, Mike? Have you, when, when you moved on from your other place where you felt a bit institutionalised, how, how did you find that transition? Yeah. It's a similar, similar story, really. It was a redundancy situation um, at a place I've been for, uh, I've been there for quite a few years. And I think because, um, because of the redundancy situation and because um, I'd been there for quite some time, a lot of the projects I would do, was doing were, were fairly similar. So it was almost, um, it was almost like a mincing machine. You'd put the, put the stuff in, turn the handle and out would come the, the, the results at the end. It almost felt like some of the things that we're doing were, um, it, it was more of the same, um, and I kind of felt um, disempowered as a BA um, and didn't feel, I wasn't confident that I'd be able to apply um, the stuff that I knew in a new organisation. But actually joining joining a, a new organisation fairly shortly afterwards, it was it was a breath of fresh air. It was like, yeah, I can do all of this. I've got all the, got all the old toolkit out again, because that's one of the other things I, I found. I wasn't applying all of the toolkit because as, as Chris was saying, you were kind of short circuiting some of it, shortcutting some of it because I already knew some of the people to talk to. Um, I was still producing um, things for and, and consulting with the, the experts in the different areas, but, but I already knew a lot of stuff. So I probably wasn't applying all over the toolkit as uh, widely as perhaps I should have done. And I think um, reacquainting myself with the toolkit and applying it in the new role was, was really um, effective and it gave me a big confidence boost as well because I thought yes actually some of this um the skills that I've got which you end up taking a lot of the the soft skills I'm not sure why they call them soft skills really because they're quite hard to get but those soft skills you can really take for granted and that ability to engage with people um is is highly transferable and that's a core a core part of our skills as BAs is around communicating effectively and listening effectively to people um, so some of those things, I think, are the things that we might take for granted. Yeah, I think no, building, on that point, building on that point, Mike, I mean, a number of people I've spoken to have found this particularly difficult if they've kind of accidentally fallen into a BA role, um, perhaps originally from being a subject matter expert. So I've seen quite a number of people who have started out or within an operational mm. role become an expert in their in their particular field have been seconded onto a project and then through that route become a business analyst. And for those individuals in particular, it could be very, very difficult to separate out where is my value, where, is it, where does it come from? Um, mm. And I think in those particular cases, it can be really hard to shift that focus from what I know and perhaps what I've been praised for knowing to um, the tools and techniques and um, interpersonal qualities. Yeah, I can see that and I have seen that. But uh, some people really... Sorry, Lisa. Oh. <laughs> um, I was going to say I, I've seen that where some people have come from from a business area and then um, done the BA training, but they bring with them that subject matter expertise, which gives them a good start. Um, but that goes out of date um, mm. reasonably quickly, so um, they, they, that can actually be quite um, disconcerting for that person because the the stuff that they thought was the foundation for their role as a BA is no longer up to date and it takes a lot of work to do that whereas the BA skills that they've then built up uh, help us help them to uh, keep up to date with those, those areas so I can see that that's another challenge mm. yeah no, so there's, there's just so much to talk about isn't there there's so many yeah so many things to think about really when when you do move on so as I always say to my uh, my apprentices you know the, the beginning is always the most uncomfortable because that's when you, you don't really know much you don't know for example, if you put onto a new project, you don't know, sort of, you've got some outline details, you've got a rough idea of what the end game is, where you want to get to, but you know, you don't know that much about it yet. You might not know the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always a bit uncomfortable at the beginning, but it always works out, doesn't it? You know, it's, you just go with the flow and just to show people what, what you can do, I think is the, is what we need to focus on. It's that, interesting. Suppose, being interesting to very comfortable with the level of uncertainty, isn't it? Which, as we get more um, experienced as BAs, we become a little bit more used to. But certainly, earlier in your career, you can be quite lacking in that confidence to just wade in. And if you if you can't see how to get to the end goal, try applying 
techniques and things to signpost you to the next step instead. Mm -hmm. um, and that can take a little while to learn and that, that comfortable um, space with ambiguity um, can take quite a while to develop. Yeah. Absolutely. Just just following on from what you said there, Lisa, I, I think I, I find the beginning the most exciting bit. It's the ending of the previous role that's the challenging one, because you think, how on earth can I transfer all the stuff that I know about this to uh, the people that are going to be picking this up? How can I download all of that? Um, that, that going into a new role and finding um, new opportunities, meeting new people, finding new uh, moved sectors as well um, uh, across various um, job changes, I find all of that quite exciting and you can apply all, all of the, the techniques that, that we've learned to, to learn more. So that, that I didn't find that as daunting. It's more the finishing finishing off the old the old role. Mm, it's hard to get away, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to sort of do that transition, do all your handover stuff and then, then move on. Mm. Um, I suppose, yeah, if you go to a different organisation, it's kind of like a clean break really, isn't it? In that That's a really good point though, Mike. I think I one of the reasons that I struggled to move on from my previous role was that um, I managed a, a really great team of BAs there and I didn't want to let mm. them down. Um, and particularly yeah. when you're taking on yeah. new BAs, perhaps who are new into role, apprentices who you're training and developing, um, it, it can feel... You can, there's a level of guilt you can feel in effectively jumping ship yeah. and abandoning your team. Mm. Um, but actually, when I did choose to leave um my team couldn't have been more supportive i mean maybe they were pleased to see the back of me but um, <laughs> didn't know, genuinely, the they, they, were no, I'm kidding. <laughs> they were they were really pleased for me and and perhaps maybe i agonized over that a little bit more than um than i should have done mm. i think that's a sound of a good manager though a caring manager though isn't it because you, you care about them you know not, not just your career progression you're worried about what was going to happen to them after you'd gone um yeah so yeah, you know, definitely. So what, what other kind of things um, did you talk about in your, in your talk at the conference then, um, Chris, about, you know, how, how to combat these things? Would you so give, um, quite, a lot of, quite a lot of the things that people had, um, that, I, that I talked to were, were quite similar actually, and similar to things that I'd done as well. So I think the most important thing probably is for people to be aware of this phenomenon and that if you are experiencing this feeling of institutionalization, you're not alone it's quite a normal thing and it's not necessarily something you need to do something about if you're happy where you're working but if it's holding you back from where you want to be then perhaps it's worth taking some action i think people that i'd spoken to had spent quite a bit of time trying to audit their skills and strengths and achievements and really get the focus onto that transferable bit so think about the tools and techniques and if they weren't using tools and techniques enough um to try to bring those into their practice a little bit more, to just sort of become more re-familiar with the transferable um, skills within their role. Um, but the other things that people had done that seemed to make the most difference were engaging with the broader BA profession um, and investing in their career. So training, certification, and getting involved in the broader BA community. So trying to meet other BAs and talk to other business analysts about what they do, how they work, um, what challenges they've encountered. It, it kind of lifts your vision from just within your current role to the broader business analysis profession. And that made a huge difference in people feeling confidence and saying, do you know something? These people I'm speaking to, they are doing things that are similar to me, or they are encountering the same challenges, or, oh gosh, they're tackling these particular things in a, in a, in a way that I could start to do myself. So I think definitely that training, certification, and meeting other people. Um, consider also getting a mentor. I mean, the IIBA runs mm. a, a mentoring scheme for business analysts. I've been a mentor on that in the past and found it very valuable from the mentoring side, but certainly a lot of people speak highly of the, the, ment the mentee experience within that. So I think it's, it's trying to lift your gaze away from the day-to-day, -day, me applying my subject matter knowledge to how am I using my BA tools and techniques? How am I investing in my training, my certification, and how am I engaging with the broader BA community? And that starts to open your eyes as to, to routes that you can take to progress your next role. Yeah, that's great advice. I think it, it just gives you confidence, doesn't it? When you do a bit more training and just add to your, add to your skill set, it just gives you that bit of a boost, doesn't it? To yeah, feel, feel a bit more confident about moving on. Um, yeah, absolutely, great advice. Mike, it, would you add anything to that from your experiences? Well, I was, I was just trying to think of some of the things that might contribute to, to that, that this 
potentially sort of working in silos that you you might end up in a bit of a silo uh, and work on very similar things with very uh, the same people all the time um and maybe looking for opportunities to kind of break out of those silos so find a different project work with some different people or um actually get involved in other things in the in the organization so not necessarily just the day job stuff so getting involved with um I, mean, I, I did uh, at the university i worked at previously um we had a, a team of bas but we didn't have enough bas to go around so um we um i think one team actually asked for some support doing process modeling and we didn't have a ba that we could assign so i just spent some lunch times with them showing them how to do process modeling to help them um help them do that which was good for me because it worked i worked with a different part of the university and it was good for them because they got an understanding they could map their processes they could think about how that was going to work so it's it, i think sometimes you've just got to look a little bit beyond the day job and see if there are other things and, and as chris says actually meeting people from other organizations through a, a whole load of events there's all sorts of different things going on um it's really good to find out what people are doing and and understand that they've got some of the same problems you can um share share ideas encourage each other um it's it there's a lot of, a lot of things out a lot of opportunities out there absolutely yeah i think um yeah both great tips thank thank you for that i think it's it's a good point about sort of moving gently out of your comfort zone before you make that i suppose quite a big leap mm -hmm. after a number of years isn't it but uh, th thanks so much for being the topic to us chris it's um it's a really interesting one that i'm sure a lot of people can resonate with um, as BAs. So um, thank you both. Uh, thank you both for joining me today. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, please do like, uh, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any ideas for any future BA Brews, um, please contact us at babrew at assistkd.com. Thank you.